with uh, the president now in Saudi Arabia re re uh, recuperating and an interim leader, the vice president, in place, there's still a lot of concern of a, of a power vacuum in the country. We've got tribal leaders, uh, tribal groups saying that they want some, some element of power that at least trying to bring down or, or uh, calm the, 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 the violent protests that have t been taking place right now. There is a massive power vacuum and there have been a lot of concerns when you look at look at uh, problems like al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula. Well, yes, but however, we have seen that since at least Friday, there's been a marked reduction on violence against protesters. So we haven't actually seen any uh, protesters being fired at the way that we have been seeing uh, since February of this year. What we have been seeing is armed clashes between what is said to be government forces allied to the mm. president uh, and tribal, uh, tribal leaders who are trying to vacate some of the, the, the areas where the, the security forces have taken power of. So, so that, that is the, at the moment, actually, uh, we have seen this reduction in the violence in relation to the protesters. So from um, your perspective, from Amnesty International's perspective, um, are you saying that basically without the president there, um, there is less violence and now that people are somewhat, and I use this term loosely, safer? Well, in terms of the, the peaceful protests, the, the generally peaceful protests, yes, we have been seeing that. Mm. However, there is a problem in relation, in relation to the armed uh, situation mm. in terms of the clashes. And that has been a lot of it humanitarian uh, because we have seen scores of families uh, fleeing Zanjibar, fleeing Taz, fleeing Sana'a as well. Mm. Uh, and that has created a lot of, of, of uh, pressure on the already strained um, humanitarian situation in the country in terms of uh, food prices, uh, fuel, etc. Yeah, just actually, this, I'm glad you brought that up because this is, I think, a real concern. Uh, th this is a country that is a, a very poor country, especially even though, even though it is the 32nd largest oil exporter in the world, it is the 16th largest seller of liquefied natural gas, even though the, the revenues that will be coming from that is still an extremely poor country. People don't have enough water, they yeah. don't have enough food, and when we're talking about human rights in that country, give us an idea of what exactly we're seeing. Well, this is the, actually part of the problem is that we have seen that people fled to their villages, so we're not able to find out exactly mm. what, they're, what they're suffering from. But we know the situation has already been dire prior to this, so we can only imagine that the situation has deteriorated further. However, in relation to people who fled from Zanjibar into Aden, we know that local activists, uh, IGOs, international organizations have been trying to step in to help them. And they're, they're living in, in schools, for example, uh, in, in big numbers of people. And, and they and they cannot be sustained within the current setup. So, how, how worrying is the Al Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula situation for perhaps even NGOs and groups uh, such as yours working within the country to try and help people? Well, uh, at the moment, you know, the, the, the issue of Al Qaeda is not really clear. Uh, where are they? What are the concerns? Has there been any attempt to arrest people uh, rather than kill them, etc.? So there has been uh, some concerns regarding uh, government attempts to to fire and kill people without actually seeking to attempt uh, attempting to, mm. to arrest them first. And we see this as a, as part of the problem is that the government is not choosing uh, the human rights. Um, uh, uh, um, the human rights aspect of mm. having to uh, quell the Al-Qaeda, uh, which is seeking yeah. to actually arrest them first. Um, so, so that is part of the problem that we are trying to monitor. But again, you have areas that are virtually you're not able to reach. Uh, you know, we've been in, in, in Yemen last year, and there are certain areas that the government told us they're completely out of bounds. Mm. Um, so so that, that is part of the difficulty there. Um, and, and this is a big challenge, obviously, for the current government. What we want this, the current government to do is to try to ensure that in trying to uh, ensuring security in the country, they should do the, that within the human rights framework.